Abigail is the name of my brother's community psychiatric nurse. This phrase often abbreviated to a CPN. He sees her approximately once a month at recovery and support in Camberwell, which is in South East London. Recovery and support sounds as though it's a place of help for those with drink or drug addictions, but it's for people suffering with severe forms of mental illness, schizophrenia being one such condition. I've met Abigail a few times when collecting meds for my brother and also when he's been particularly unwell and has volunteered himself to be sectioned. And the few times he's done this, he's been talked out of doing so by both Abigail and his previous CPN, Jenny, because they felt the climate within the section in unit would probably not benefit him and he'd be best at home with me. I did email Abigail last year and gave a link to one or two of my targeting videos in the hope she'd watch them and get back to me, but I did state that she didn't have to respond, and she didn't. For the new year, I've decided I do need a response because I'm sick to the back teeth of the gaslighting, silence, false diagnosis and everything else surrounding my personalised targeting from the state or deep state. I uploaded two videos to my OneDrive account and provided a link to watch them and also handed in a letter with a memory card containing the same two videos. All I require from Abigail is for her to watch and listen to at least one video and after careful consideration and on a balance of probabilities choose which of the two possibilities given she agrees with. Do the various clips within the video show me a coincidence? Or do they prove I am the target of this one element used as part of my targeting? Couldn't be simpler. As you can see here, I handed in the letter to reception for Abigail and later emailed her the link to the two videos and the typed letter which is also on the memory card and which you are about to read. After a week and no reply, I emailed her last night, the 18th of January, as I had a convenient excuse to contact her regarding my brother's medication, so asked whether she had looked at my videos. Pleased to say that she did reply this morning, but unsurprisingly, it's not the answer I'd hoped for. One YouTuber, an engaging Englishman who puts out a video most days and many of them are about all things surrounding COVID-19 commented on the latest video which was one of the two sent to Abigail and agreed he could distinctly hear the mostly abusive words and phrases directed at me with a few exceptions but putting that video to one side why did she not comment on the other video where non-verbal means to focus my attention were used which, if watched, would be abundantly clear that the various coughs, spitting, bicycle bell ringing, etc. are not coincidence, given a balance of probabilities. At least she didn't say that I believe vehicles and pigeons are talking to me, unlike our delightful and not at all corruptible police force. I've said this before and will we'll repeat again, the police do a very necessary job sometimes. I'm not so keen on their following orders to the letter by removing people 
wanting to sit and have a chat on a park bench because it isn't a form of exercise and under COVID-19 laws and guidelines such flagrant flouting of these petty positions by sitting on a bench or on grass causing no one any problems whatsoever demands a reprimand or fine from the police. But the police are following government orders and much of our government's means to deal with COVID-19 is unacceptable. But why or why do the police take part in the cover-up of this targeting programme? I really don't understand it and it matters not one bit what they think of me because the targeting is global and destroying by stealth many good people. Well that's my belief and if the police have proof this is not the case then do show me.